Right before we jump into this video, if you'd like me to send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations, just look for this orange box over on fronosphoto.com, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I'll send you that guide for free. Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com and this is a raw file review of the Canon R7 and R10 raw files. Now I've been able to convert the raw files, the CR3s into DNGs so that you can download them and play with them and edit them and pixel peep them and do whatever you want to do with them other than sell them and call them your own. Now the link is down below. So what did I shoot? Well, a couple of weeks ago, Canon brought us out to Orlando to test out the R7 and R10 before they were announced. We got to shoot a bunch of different wildlife from birds to alligators to more birds. We also shot skateboarders as well as volleyball players and then finished up inside at higher ISOs for indoor soccer. So what I want to do right now is turn over here to the computer and show you the edited raw files. I'm a fan of showing the best work. I like to make sure that I edit my files when I share them, but you are gonna get to see the unedited files when you download them. This is what an ed unedited looks like from this raw file. We're starting with the R7 files. And yeah, I'm at 1600 ISO right here because it's F8 and I just wanted to get a faster shutter speed. Now, when we zoom in, it looks fine to me. Now, people are gonna sit there and be like, oh my God, there's noise, there's grain. There I look at these dots. It's like, guys, if you've never shot film, you don't understand that grain, grain structure is the part of photography. It's a part of it. When you zoom in on a file one to one and it's 1600 ISO, this is perfectly fine. If I printed this out at 17 by 22 or larger with any printer, you're never gonna notice any of those things. They're not even issues. I almost said issues, they're not even issues. So anyway, file looks really good. Yes, of course it starts off super flat and when you process it, I use preset Skittles as a starting point. It looks really good. Now this is still at 1600 ISO and no, I didn't need to be at 16 and I didn't need to be at 1 1600th of a second, but that's where I was when I went into the shaded area. This looks really good to me. Now, some of you might say that it's too dark, but the mistake that a lot of people make when they're editing their files, especially if they're in shade, is they do this. They're like, well, this is, it should look like they're in the sun. Well, they're not in the sun, they're in the shade. So make sure you keep it as original as possible. Now, if you're someone who wants to see the dynamic range test and the, there's people out there who raise it five stops, a raw file to look at, I don't do that stuff. Why? Because it doesn't matter. These files look fine to me and they're gonna look fine to you. The color looks great. Look, it's where it started flat. That's where it's going with the Skittles preset. Now I did notice that there is a green shift with the Canon files. I noticed that a lot of them are coming out green right out of the camera. So what I have to do after doing some of my tweaks is go ahead and add some magenta, take some of that green back out. Now that's on a Canon file. On Sony files, it's kind of the other way, I believe, where it's more magenta and I gotta do more green. And with Nikon, it's very similar as well. So all of these guys have some sort of little shifts and you just go ahead and tweak those raw files. I, I, I think these raw files look so much better than the JPEG straight out of the camera. Colors look good, files look good, uh, sharpness looks good. Everything about it, I'm happy with. Well, you can never say everything, but most things about it. And one thing I'm not totally sold on is this eight to 15 millimeter fisheye lens that's adapted. There's a lot of fringing around the edges, a lot of green fringing. But that's the nature of that type of lens. That's a fisheye lens. Uh, I'm happy with the shot, even though this color looks a little green to me. So let me see if I can go ahead and add some more magenta. Yeah, there it is. It was too green. Did you see that? That's where it was. Oh my God, Jared, that's terrible. Look how green that is. And then we go ahead and we shift it and we get rid of that magenta. This, or get rid of the green. That's where it started, but that's a raw file. It's flat. Then you go like that and you're like, boom. And that's basically what I did with Skittles. Let me jump in here real quick because I wanna show you this image taken with the Canon EOS R7 and edited with Fro Pack 3, starting with Zoolander. Then we've got Walter White. Then we've got Mount Airy, which is nice. It's just like he's floating there, which is perfect. Followed by Capone and then Almost Famous. But as you just saw in the video, I banged out Skittles on this one with one click and it was like, bam. Skittles looks really good. Then we'll just need to modify it to pull out some of the green, but check out this photo right here. We're just gonna hit this with some Skittles and boom, that's what that looks like with one 
click. Now, if you're looking to speed up your raw workflow or give yourself a great starting point on the computer or on your phone for mobile, we created 15 custom Lightroom presets that you can check out right now at fronosphoto.com slash fropack3. While you're over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters. And if you decide to pick them up right now, they are currently on sale. Or if you want to save even more and get Skittles, you can get Fropack 1, 2, and 3 as the triple play bundle and save even more. Now, let's get back to the raw file review. Moving on, strong backlight right here, one two thousandth of a second, 100 ISO, which is base. Uh, this file looks fine. What, what, what I was looking at with, you see the fringing? That's coming from that lens. That's what that 18 to 15 millimeter lens is giving you, that fisheye. That's an adapted fisheye. Adapted lenses worked fine on the camera. It's just that particular lens has a lot of fringing. Portrait wise, we're at 1.2 here with the 85 1.2, 100 ISO, super nice and clean. You guys can play with the file, see what you think. We got volleyball out here. Wait for it to load, there you go, nice and sharp. That's where it is, nice and, not nice and flat, but flat. We're at 100 ISO still, 1 2500th of a second. And yeah, when you zoom in, look, even at 100 ISO, oh my God, I see some, some dots in the background. Now look, there's a lot of people that try to sell you noise reduction software. Uh, I'm not a fan of it. I will never use the noise reduction software. I've never used it because what it looks like when you use it is that it smooths out your images. Now, when I'm at higher ISOs, it's all right to see that grain. I'd rather see a sharp noise or a sharp grain than to have it smooth out and the image not look sharp. You do not need to run these noise AI reductions, filters, I don't wanna name any of the companies, but you know who they are. I don't think you need it. And I've seen a lot of people that, sh that just overdo it and it just looks really bad. There's nothing wrong with dots. There's nothing, that's the grain structure. There's nothing wrong with that. And then finally here with the R7 indoors, we're at 4,000 ISO. That's where it started, a little underexposed. I had to bump my exposure up just a little bit. Uh, yeah, you're gonna see noise. You're gonna see 4,000 ISO. Look, if, if I had my choice, I would go full frame all day but some people can't afford to go for the full frame at this point, and there's nothing wrong with going with the crop sensor. This is what the file looks like. Download it, see for yourself what you think. This is what it looks like, right? That's noise. You're gonna see noise and grain, but do not try to soften it up. It's just gonna make your image look terrible. Now moving on to the R10. Outside, what are we at? We're at 800 ISO right here, 1 3200th of a second, because they were in the shade. Look at that. Those are my pants. I'm pretty sure. Is that a reflection of, that may be a reflection of my, my, my legs. I think that is a reflection of my, they, they look like my killer legs. They looked awesome. Anyway, awesome. Hey guys, it's Austin. Color on this looks good. Where'd it start? Oh God, look how, look at, look at that. And then when we go ahead and bang it with some Skittles and then modify it, that's how good it looks. Nice and sharp right where it needs to be. But of course at F8 with the uh, 100 to 400, which is a pretty affordable lens for the RF mount it should all be in focus as long as you nail your focus. We got the bird flying up. That looks, that looks green to me. That looks, that looks, that looks green to me. Right off the bat, that looks green to me. There we go. Get rid of that. Maybe add some vibrance. Yeah, th th this color's looking a little off. Maybe you guys can edit, edit it a little better than I can. Next up, another bird. 800 ISO, flat to boom, looks good. Manny Ortiz, look at this guy. Will you just look at this guy? What are we at? We're at 800 ISO again, 1 320th at 5.6 with the 100 to 400. Nice and sharp, tones, colors look good. Even the background blows out. That's what's gonna happen when you're close to your subject. A couple more indoor shots that I have some of the raw files from the R10. I mean, yes, again, you're gonna see noise, you're gonna see grain, but when you fill the frame more, which this isn't even filling the frame that much, uh, you're not gonna notice as much noise. Which brings up, don't crop. If you're gonna crop your images, you're going to introduce more noise. You're just blowing up that noise. So try not to crop if you can help it. That, that's gonna make your images much cleaner and better, especially when you're shooting at higher ISOs. This one started right here, flat. I'm not that far off with this one. The color, uh, that may look a little green still. There's some of that magenta. It's a little different because the lighting in this place was absolutely atrocious. There was like one light every 20 feet, so it wasn't very good. Uh, but again, I'm giving you these files to play with. 
you're gonna get the flat file unedited that you can take it into Lightroom and edit them yourselves to take a look. Do you like the 100 ISO? Do you like the 4000 ISO? What do you think about it? If you have any questions, let me know down below. But once again, you can download the raw files for personal use to take a look at the R7 and R10 files to see what you think. So thank you guys very much for watching. Jared, polinfronosphoto.com. See ya.